Where are you going? going so hey everyone, it's Sky here, and I'm here with my finished page flip through video that I said that I was going to do uh, back in, I think it was December or maybe even November, I'm not sure. So I have a lot of people ask um, to see the images that I've colored in all my books and I'm assuming that a lot of those people don't have Instagram but if any of you do that were interested in this video and have been waiting for it I do post almost everything on my Instagram um, I suppose some stuff I don't and some stuff I haven't yet but um, I don't know when this video is going to be put up I'll probably try to get it up sooner than later so um, who knows some of that stuff might be posted before or after this video who knows I'm not really sure I'm just recording in advance so, anyways, um, I figured we would start off with Hannah's books, of course, because she is my absolute favorite. So, I'm going to go in order that the books came out. So, first up, we have Mermaids, Fairies, and Other Girls of Whimsy. So, this was pretty much the fan favorites that um, Hannah put in this coloring book. So, it wasn't all of her available work. I do believe she has coloring pages of all of her work now. I could be wrong. But anyways, so we were just going to go through the ones that I've done. So I did take this book apart. I do regret it. So my goal hopefully is to get this and Enchanted Faces, which I also took apart, uh, done this year. And I'm going to paint all the borders black in those two books and then get it spiral bound. So anyways, this is Ballet Girl. I actually colored her with Marco Ruffines, and I was quite happy with how she turned out, even though I'm actually not a huge fan of those pencils. Next up, we have Bella's Sea Monkey, which I did a skin tutorial on, I think, forever ago. Or no, sorry. I tried to do a skin tutorial, and then the clips didn't save so then I did an ombre hair tutorial on her and there is a speed color minus the skin that will be up either before or after this so be sure to go and check that out. Um, I used um, Prismacolor Premiers for this I believe. So next up this is Little Miss Delish and I used Prismacolor Scholars for this and acrylic paint for the background. Next up is Vera and um, I tried to do a watercolor galaxy background. I'm not too big a fan of it, it just looks like random blobs in the sky. But um, I wasn't a big fan of this picture anyway, so that's why I decided to try it on this one. And I'm not completely upset with how it turned out, given that it was my first time trying that. I haven't tried it since, but I do plan to. And I believe I used Prismacolor Scholars for this as well. Next is Tree of Secrets, and this was actually for a focal point challenge, but unfortunately it didn't qualify because um, I didn't realize that we couldn't do the whole girl. That was told to me after the fact, but I was still super happy with how she turned out, and that was for May. It was in the Hannah Lynn group before I became an admin. Next up is Chelsea, and I believe I used Prismacolor Scholars, or no, sorry, Premiers for this one. I actually have trouble seeing the difference between the Scholars and the Premiers in my earlier colorings, so I'll try and say what they are, but I'm not 100% sure. So next up, this is Michelle and Jojo. And this one was another one that I colored with the Marco Ruffines and I did a watercolor sunset which I was really proud of and I plan on doing another one of those soon because they're just beautiful. I really love how this image turned out. It's one of my favorites. I'll probably say that a lot. I have a lot of favorites. 
So this is Bookworm Fairy. I use Prismacolor Scholars for this. Um, I don't mind her. I do wish that I would have done the wings differently. Um, I asked an old friend of mine what color to do her wings and even though I was skeptical I listened to her anyways and I wish I hadn't have. I should have followed my gut. Um, I really don't like how it turned out. If I were to do it again I would probably make her wings kind of green and pink and kind of match her shirt. But oh well you learn anyways. So next up this is um, I don't know how to pronounce her name, Aya, it's A-I-A is what Hannah has, and she's really pretty. Um, I did put glitter on her wings and the clouds, although you can't see it too well. Oh, there we go. And um, this is actually a non-dominant hand challenge. It was just for fun though, it was a color along, and we a lot of us colored it with our non-dominant hands because um, a lady in the group had actually um, cut her finger, I believe, so she couldn't color, or couldn't color with her usual hand anyways, so we did that for her. So next up, this is, let me find the name here, where is she? Hmm. Oh, there she is. This is Melissa. I feel like I have my pages out of order here, but maybe not. Or did I just miss one? Sorry, bear with me one minute here. I did, I missed one. That's what threw me off. So this is Peyton. This was one of the first Hannah girls I ever colored. Um, I think she's actually maybe the second, so I used, um, I think I used Crayolas, I'm not 100% sure though. Yeah, I've definitely improved a lot since then. This is Melissa, and this was um, a Disney character challenge. I did this just for fun, since I'm an admin, we don't usually participate in the challenges. Anyways, I made her look like Pocahontas, and I actually used Marco Ruffins for this one as well, and I'm super proud of how it turned out, um, especially this gorgeous tan color. I really love that color, and I see I feel that the Prismacolors don't really have any colors like that, so that's why I use the Marco Ruffins, and I actually did use textured snow for the snow in the trees. So really happy with that one. And lastly from this book is Lady Liberty, and I'm really happy with how she turned out too. Um, the whole background sparkles in the sky there. Um, I put in my own fireworks as well as went over the ones that Hannah had. And I just all around love this one. So that is it for um, the Mermaids and Fairies book. Just get these in order and we'll move on to the next one. It's another reason why I really wish I hadn't have taken the book apart. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but it really wasn't. So next is Enchanted Faces. Again, I took this one apart. And again, I'm just going to steal the name pages out of here, just so I can tell you who they are. So this is the first one I did, and she is another one of my favorites because it's like, it's totally different worlds. So this was for an Opposites Challenge, so I did a live, um, and the opposite was The Walking Dead. And that is what I came up with. Um, her name is Moon Glow, is what Hannah has her named. Next was Charlene, and this was a color palette challenge um, in June. 
believe I used Scholars for this, Prismacolors for that one. This was probably the third Hannah Lynn image I colored. This is Mariana. Yeah, Mariana. And I used, I think, Crayolas for her. You guys might recognize this one. This is Wendy. We did a color along with her. I used Prismacolor Premiers. And this is Autumn. Um, I had actually won a challenge in the Hannah group and um, the challenge that I picked for the next month was a monochromatic challenge. So I did one just for fun. And I absolutely love how that looks. I love just one toned pictures. Next up is Raquel. You will probably recognize her too. We used her for a tanned skin tutorial and also the cloud and sky tutorial. And then I did a speed color of finishing her. Super, super happy with this. Uh, the only thing I don't re recommend keeping works in progress is for too long because you can just tell the difference between her face and you know everything else and I do believe back then we were using the Prismacolor Scholars I could be wrong but I think we were using Scholars for the skin and then switched to Prismacolor Premiers because it was a time after quite a while after that I did the rest of this so I did use Stickles for the moon can't see it very well but it's beautiful so one of my favorite glitters so this is Wendy's Waris. I believe we did a ombre hair tutorial on her too and um, this is one of my favorite pictures and I'm really mad at myself because her eye makeup is a little crazy because I used a pen that I hadn't tried out before so I wasn't used to it and it turned out to be way thicker than I had originally thought it was. So yeah, I wasn't too happy there. But everything else I'm happy with. I used Prismacolor Scholars for that. This is Janessa, done as Elizabeth for Monster High Challenge. I believe I used Prismacolor Premiers for this as well. Next we have Dee Dee which I believe I actually use Scholars for her. Here's Tallulah's Treasures and I used Prismacolor Premiers for her. I think maybe I even use Scholars. I'm not 100% sure on this one. Her skin looks like Scholars but the rest looks like Premiers. So this one is Spring to Life. I'm not completely happy with this one. Um, I loved it starting out on the hair, but then, I don't know, the rest of the colors, I just didn't like it. I think I should have went a little bit darker instead of all pastels, and that maybe would have made a big difference. And I believe I used Scholars for this. Sasha and Jet, I also used Scholars for, and... Um, this is one of my favorites too. I did mess up on her lip a little bit. I tried to make it fuller and you can't really tell until you get up close. There you can kind of see the difference, but far away it looks okay. So this is Forever Rose and this was for a selective colors challenge. So you had to pick a color and then any similar objects in your image you could color with that color and the rest had to be in grayscale. So if I had any other roses in this picture I would have been able to color them blue but since there was just one I just did the one rose. And I'm super happy with this especially her eye, just the detail in it. I don't know why but I can get that with grays but I cannot do that with any other color to save my life without it looking silly. So I'm super happy with her. I don't know why, but I just love coloring in grays. Everything just looks so much nicer. 
This, I believe, was my very first Hannah picture. This is Aliana's Ol otter. I want to say Olivia's otter. It's Aliana's otter. And I used Crayola pencils for her. Next we have Taya, which I call her like my pastel punk princess. Um, I really love how she turned out. I love her hair. I love everything about her. She was one of my favorites. Um, I even put some eyeshadow on her and it doesn't look too terrible. Um, I do believe this is with the Scholars. I could be wrong. I think it's with the Scholars though. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So this is another one of my early Hannahs. This is Sadie's Dragon and this was also a color palette challenge. So you had a primary color, secondary color, and then you have two accent colors. And um, I think I used Scholars for this. I did go over it with my Wink of Stella brush pen when I first got it. And you can definitely see it's more shiny than glittery. This is let's see if I can find, okay, Mona, and I actually won this challenge. This was the primaries color challenge. So on the back, I like keeping track of stuff like this. I don't know why. I just I like knowing. So I actually wrote down the colors that I used. So I was using the Prismacolor Scholars for this, and that is what I came up with with just those pencils. So those were the main pencils, and then those were what they could go into. And I actually ended up winning, and I was super excited for that, because at first I didn't like it, but it's definitely grown on me, especially for just using three pencils. It was a major challenge. So I was pretty proud of myself. So this is Poinsettia Pixie. This was my replacement focal point challenge, because the one I had done previously didn't qualify. And I'm super in love with her too. Again, the eyes and the detail with the grays. I don't know why I can't get colors to look like that. Maybe I just overthink it, but absolutely love her. I like love all of them though. So this is Love Letter. I used Prismacolor Scholars for her and I was pretty excited about the glittery effect on her tail. I thought it worked out really nice. And I think there's only one more in here. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, we have Kissy Fish, which was one of my favorites. I'm really happy with how she turned out. I used Prismacolor Scholars for her as well. But really happy with her. I took my time and I was pretty proud of how she turned out. Especially with the streaks in the hair. That was actually accidental, but it really worked to my benefit. Happy accidents. See, there's 18 minutes and we're not even all the way through the Hannah box. There might actually be more parts to this than I thought because I'm going to try and keep the videos to about 30 minutes. I don't know if I said that or not already. I have the memory of a goldfish. So next we have Sweet and Simple Whimsy Girls. Um, I haven't done too much in this book. We'll start from the back and let's see here. This is Ocean Rose. I am, I've got to say I'm not really happy about this one. I do love a lot of things about her. If I could do her over though, I would keep everything the same except all of this yellow. I would have done the light blue on her crown and her tail and I think that would have made it look a lot better. I think that yellow is just a little bit too much but um, it's a learning process. Uh, I believe I used Scholars for that one. So next this was for a comic book character challenge where um, we took one of Hannah Lynn's girls and turned her into a comic book character so I chose Emma Frost. So I did a watercolor sunset background and then I did the rest of her in the Prismacolor Scholars. Super happy with how she turned out. So 
This is Golden Pond. And she is probably one of my favorites. I don't know why, I just I love how she turned out, especially her hair. I wish I would have written down the colors that I used for her hair because I love that color of brown. But um, I painted in the background and then I went in and just put little dots and like glows around the fireflies, which I'm not sure were actually there or not. I don't think they were, I think I added those. And then I re-added in the little pond things. And I think just the colors were on point for this one. The colors are very up my alley. It's a lot of blues and purples, which really work well together. So, really happy with that. And that's all I've done in Sweet and Simple so far. Oh, and we'll be right back. My husband's calling me. Alright, I'm back. So, next up we have Enchanted Halloween which was a little bit different than Hannah's previous books because all of her other books had 50 pages each. This one has 30 pages times two, so there's two of each page, which I absolutely love. So, I colored quite a bit in here. Some you've seen, some you haven't. Okay, so first we have Apple Dumplin'. And I used Premiers for her and Ink Tents for the background. And I'm fairly happy with her. It was more just one of those get it done kind of things. So I was trying to finish all of my um, works in progress by the new year, which I managed to do. Which is very happy about. This is Catherine and Midnight. I used Prismacolor Premiers for her as well. Pretty happy with this one. I used Sharpies for the background and um, it actually didn't turn out too bad. You get up close though and you can see all those different layered marker things, but I think it actually works very well for this picture. This is Blissful Halloween. This is probably one of my favorites I've done in the Halloween book so far. Um, this was the first page I ever did without using a blender pencil and I didn't really use much pencil to shade at all so you can still see a lot of the white coming through it. Sorry about the camera there. But I think it kind of adds to the effect that I was looking for with this page. Um, and then I painted on just little fur accents, like her paw and her tail and her ears. I was super happy with that. Next up we have Midnight Flight. This was just a super quick one. Um, I used a lot of Sharpies for the, the hills and the background and then I did her in, I believe, Prismacolor Premiers. So you might recognize this one. I used this for um, a how to color fur tutorial or how to paint on fur. And again, I did the same thing as I did with the other girl and um, painted her fur in. But this is another one of my favorites. I really love how it turned out. And I think it was my first time adding a nose, like the bridge of a nose onto a Hannah girl as well. So. It was pretty fun. Another one you might recognize, I did a speed coloring of Victoria. I um, can't remember why, I think I just did this one for fun and just decided to record it. Um, I used Prismacolor Premiers and watercolor and ink tents and acrylic paint for this one. Oh, that's why, because I actually did a how to color a moon tutorial with this one. So I speed colored the rest of it and finished it. So this is Spooky Walk, another one I'm really happy with. This was my Halloween color along, El Dia de los Muertos. Still super happy with her too. And then this is Masquerade Party. This one took forever to do all the little folds in the fabric and get it so it looks super glittery, but I'm really happy with it. My only complaint is I wish the skin would have turned out a little bit better. If you get closer, you can see it's kind of a little streaky, but 
Like I always say, distance is your friend, especially with your images. When you get up close, that's when you start seeing all the flaws and stuff. So next we have a Whimsy Girls Christmas. And I've done a few in this one, not too many. This was Partridge in a Pear Tree, which I know a lot of you are hounding me to do a color along of this one still. And I do plan to. Um, we'll probably do like a Christmas in July kind of thing and we'll do this one. So I used Prismacolor Premiers for this and then I used some sparkle paint for the background. I don't know if it really shows up though. And then just some acrylic paint for the pom-poms and stuff. This is Star of Wonder. Um, I'm fairly happy with this one. It doesn't stand out to me because it's not really my usual colors. It's a little bit more earthy and kind of kind of just dull almost to me. And um, I did, I don't know if you can tell, I've showed this a couple times, but I actually messed up on her eyes and glued some back on her. So, <laughs> yeah. This is Candy Cane Angel. I used Prismacolor Premiers for her, I believe, and acrylic paint for the background. This, I believe her name is Reindeer Girl. Let me see here. Yeah, Reindeer Girl. And I started off really happy with this one and loving it because of her hair. It is so bright and vibrant. And then after I did her hair, I was just so scared to color the rest of it. But I finally got it done, and I was really happy with it when I did. So sometimes you just got to persevere. I pretty much just colored this one to get it off of my work in progress shelf way back when I used to keep them on my shelf. Now I don't do that because it pressures me a little too much. But yeah, I was really happy with how she turned out anyways. And the last one that I've colored in here was actually my Christmas color along, and that was the Nutcracker. So I used Prismacolor Premiers for this, and there is a video available if you're interested. Next up we have I Dream in Color, and... Um, I'm not... too sure what time we're at. Sorry, I kind of brain freeze there, or, yeah, I don't like saying brain fart, it just sounds funny, <laughs> I was just going to call it a brain freeze, my brain froze, couldn't think for a minute, I haven't done too much in this book, I think I've only done like three pictures, so, this was the first one I ever colored in here, I was super happy with this, I used Prismacolor Premier's uh, watercolors and pastels to just give it a little bit of a blue background without having to color the whole thing, Super happy with how she turned out. Um, especially that cauldron. Can we just focus on that cauldron for a minute? That is probably my favorite part about this picture. I don't know why. It just seems so real to me. I just love it. But I was really happy with this. Um, I plan on having every page, since the book's called I Dream in Color, I plan on having every page super colorful with little bits of grays to make it pop. And then, you know, just kind of having a kind of theme to it. So for this one, of course, it was like a rainbow theme. So all the writing except for rainbow is in gray. And then the rainbow was, of course, a rainbow. And then everywhere I could put a rainbow, I did. So super happy with that. Um, this was Every Artist was first an amateur. And the theme here was kind of like paint and paint dripping. And I kind of stuck to a very limited color palette with this one. And I'm glad I did because I really like how she turned out. That one was also a color along, so you can check that out if you're interested. And the only other one I've done in this book is kind of the, not the title page, but like the first intro page. So I actually colored this with um, Marco Rafines, and I'm actually really happy with it too. Uh, it did take me a long time, especially this background here but I was really happy when I finally got it done and I even put makeup on her and it looks okay so I was really happy with that as well so lastly for Hannah's books we have Tattoo Darlings and 
I've only colored one image in this book, unfortunately, and it's actually this month. I'm recording this in January. I'm not sure when it's going to be up, but yeah, it's a beautiful book. I want to color more in it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I want to color all of them, really, but I've only had time to color one, and that was Sparrow. So I started off with this absolutely beautiful hair. I just love this color, and then I was really stuck for a while, asked for help, decided to go with orange, and I'm pretty glad with how it turned out. I did stickle up her wings so they're super sparkly, or I should say wing, only one of them is showing. But yeah, really, really happy with how she turned out. I wish I could color in this book more. Anyways, I think we're going to leave it at that for, ah, uh, let's do one more. I go dropping my book. Okay, we're going to conclude this video with Jasmine Beckett Griffith's book since I only have one of hers and her work is very similar to Hannah's. We're going to conclude this video with this and again I've only colored one image in here even though the pages again are just absolutely stunning. They do leave more room for your imagination than Hannah's books do. So the only one I've done in here is Alana, and I used Inktense pencils and Prismacolor Premiers for her. The Inktense was done with mostly the background, and she herself was done with the Prismacolor Premiers. And I actually followed a video by Shine Bright Design. I was super happy with how she turned out, especially those eyes. The eyes are just flawless. Can we just zoom in on those again? They are so lifelike to me compared to what I usually do. So yeah, really happy with that. Go and check out Shine Bright Design. Anyways, that is it for this part of the finished flip. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And I hope you guys will join me for my future flips. Uh, we still have a lot of books to get through. So yeah, don't hesitate, and I will hopefully see you guys in my next video. Bye!